What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and it is finally time for us to talk about this guy, the new PlayStation DualSense Edge controller. Now, I feel like there's been a lot of mixed feelings about this controller, like from the price point, some features that people thought were missing. So let's go ahead and talk about it and see if it's worth you picking up. But before we get started, huge shout out to Huel for sponsoring this video. So check it out guys, this is the Huel Black Edition. If you haven't heard of Huel, they make convenient and affordable shakes packed with 27 vitamins and minerals. And I'll be honest, I can get lost in my day and I probably won't consume as much as I should when working. And this is a super easy way for me to get something healthy and nutritious in my system to kind of offset my bad habits. I'm big on the Black Edition since one serving has over 40 grams of protein and comes to my personal favorite flavor, banana. And I know a lot of you out there are going to love to hear this, but this is also 100% vegan because it is a plant-based drink. So it's naturally gluten-free and has zero artificial sweeteners and less than 5% sugar. Not to mention with your first order, you receive a Huel t-shirt and a guide to get you started. So of course, if you guys wanna learn more, I'll have links down below in the description for you to check them out. Now, I don't know if you guys caught the first video that we did where we went over everything that you get in the box, uh, but let's really quickly go over that. So when you pick up one of these, you of course get the DualSense Edge controller here and you get the hard shell carrying case, which I think is actually really nice. It feels like a premium case. It's got even the PlayStation symbols in the back uh, and it carries pretty much everything you'll need. You'll of course have your charger up top. It's a long braided cable, USB-C to USB-A. And underneath that, you'll have your controller over here, but you'll also get your removable half dome buttons that you can add to the back of this, as well as your paddles that you can throw on here so you can choose between the two. And you also get a couple of joystick options. You got some long ones over here. These are domed. And you also have some regular short ones, which are also domed. Me personally, I like the ones that come with the controller. You'll also get this lock included. So if you wanna have your cable plugged into your controller, this lock will make sure that you can't remove it by accident. Now you might notice that there's an empty spot right here, uh, but Sony does sell the thumbsticks separately. So if you wanna go ahead and pick one up, I believe it's 20 bucks, uh, you can go ahead and keep an extra one, a spare right here. So if your controller ever shows signs of stick drift or something, or it gets messed up in some way, maybe you got Doritos all up inside your, your sticks, then boom, you've got your backup right there. Now, speaking of the analog sticks, there's a little release button that's not the easiest to get to, but you can pop open this lever right here, remove this plate, and this plate, it's fine. I wish it weren't glossy. It's probably gonna look pretty gross with fingerprints and whatnot. I do wish it was the same finish as this. I personally like the fact that this isn't gloss compared to here. I thought this was gonna be like metal. Am I crazy? Did you think this was gonna be like a metal? I felt like it was gonna be metal because of the shininess, yeah. right? But it's plastic and it's fine. Uh, you probably don't want metal to weigh this thing down because then it completely changes the way it feels in your hand. Uh, but when you get access to here, you can change out those analog sticks. You can just pop them open with this lever, swap them out change them up. I wish this were longer, like this whole piece were here so that you can remove it completely. Cause this, with this one, you can completely take out this whole portion, this whole face plate and go get a third party one in a different color, really switch up the look of your controller. But it makes it really hard to do that here because you'll still have this black portion at the bottom. And the last thing worth mentioning with this case is when you've got your controller sitting inside of here, you can pop the back it's got Velcro, so you can pop the back and just throw in a cable right inside of here to charge it. Does it get dirty? It will, I think over time you'll find scuffs, especially if you do travel with it. We've got a couple things here, but with this material, I feel like you can just scrub this off with like a wet napkin or something, you can just rub it out. So this is Sony's first pro controller. Uh, we've seen third party pro controllers from companies like Scuff. But this is Sony's first time saying, like, yeah, all right, we'll provide something for those eSports people or folks who just want to do a bit more with the system. And this is their answer. I know right off the bat, a lot of people were like, the price is crazy, 200 bucks. And I, and I felt that way too, at first. When I first heard about it, I was like, 200 bucks? I wasn't expecting that. 
Now, if we're gonna compare this to the standard controller, here you have it. Here's the difference between the way they look. So immediately things that you see that are different, we've got darker buttons. So now instead of white, we've got these black buttons. Uh, you can see they changed the design with this black strip. Also, we've got a black trackpad, uh, but with this trackpad, you have the PlayStation symbols embedded into it. It's a really, really nice touch. And you also see that on the triggers on the L2 and R2 buttons, not something that we had before. And I also think that it's a pretty cool addition. But they got two more buttons in the front. Now, those are different buttons, and we're gonna get to that in just a second. Now, when it comes to the back of the controller, we've got two very important parts. So first thing are these trigger locks, and you have these lines that indicate how long of a press you can do with them. So this is the standard long press, just like any other DualSense controller. And you can make that press a little bit shorter with each level. People who are maybe playing first person shooters where you wanna get that shot off really fast, uh, you got an advantage here. Instead of having to do a really long press, you can just do the, a super quick press. So me playing a lot of Apex Legends, I'm almost always in this mode. Now what's kind of cool is that with these DualSense controllers, you've got like this sensation in certain games, developers can kind of tune the way it feels to pull down these triggers. When I play Ghost of Tsushima, uh, when you pull out the bow and arrow, you can actually feel like you're pulling on the bow, uh, especially when you've got it in this long press. And what's nice is even if you've got it in the short mode, it doesn't completely disable that feeling. It's shorter, it's way shorter. You can still feel the vibration of like pulling on the bow. It's just not as satisfying, I'd say, as like the long press. If you went with something like the Scuff Reflex, I think you completely lose that sensation. Now also in the back, the big deal here are those paddles. So those extra buttons that you can map any of these buttons to back here. So that's a really big deal. And I know a lot of people are upset that they didn't include four. So they only included two. Now I'm not gonna lie, me personally, I only use two. I'm not like an elite player. I'm not like a pro. So I don't have the dexterity yet to try and have like four fingers going in the back. I'm not that guy, so I'm not personally mad. Now, one thing I will commend Sony on is if you don't wanna use the standard paddles here, I know there are quite a few people out there who can't get on board with it because of accidental presses. They're worried that in their standard resting position with the controller, they're gonna press those buttons. You can actually swap them out for those half domes that we talked about earlier. Now, I feel like the half dome, it takes some getting used to, but if you are new to the pro controller space, this is for those people. With these, you can keep your normal grip position, and whenever you want, you can just go up and press those buttons. Do you get used to it? I have not gotten used to it yet. Uh, I find myself going, me personally, I find myself going back to these more often, and overall, I do feel like it's just more comfortable. My fingers can be a bit more rested than arched up. But Jay, now let's talk about those FN buttons, right? So you might have noticed here, that there are some extra buttons up front. These are your FN buttons. Now with these, you get access to a few more controls that I think are pretty useful. And you know what? Let me just show you guys exactly what they do. All right, so we got our little PlayStation setup over here. Now, when you press these FN buttons, and this is a pretty huge feature, I'd say, you can get a menu to pop up as you press them. Now you can do a couple of different things here. First off, you can switch to a different profile. So as you can see here, we've got like three different profiles here. I have one set for Apex Legends, so I have my button layout and just like the different controller settings that I like when I'm playing this game. And when I press this, I can jump to that profile at any moment. If I wanna go back to the default, press triangle, circle for Apex, X for this whatever random profile we have there. So you can do that at any point while holding that FN button. And a pretty subtle but cool feature is that the little LED lights on the bottom of the trackpad can show you which profile you're accessing whenever you switch them. Now, what's even cooler than being able to switch profiles is you can jump to the other side. So say you've got a headset connected. When you press the FN button, you can adjust the headphone volume by just pressing up and down. And if you're in game chat, you can change your balance between the game and the chat audio. I think that's probably going to be 
the most used feature when it comes to these buttons. But I will say, part of me does wish that you could do a little bit more with them, maybe map them to be a button press like one of these. For now, you can only use this for changing your profile and adjusting your audio on the other side. Now, what's also cool about this FM button is that when you hold it down and let's say you're in the game and something feels off, you can just jump into the main menu to customize your profiles, but you can also change your stick sensitivity. So all of that is completely customizable and you can just do it on the fly. So once I, let's say I set this to steady. Once I'm done with that, hold down the FN and then boom, changed and I'm right back into the game. So it's really quick, pretty seamless, I'd say. Now let's kind of talk about this section, right? So this is also one of the key things. Not only do you get the hardware side of things where you get actual physical buttons, all of that, but these custom profiles and just changing the stick sensitivity is going to be one of the major key points if you are really serious about your gaming. So when you jump inside of here, you can change the feel of each stick. So you got your left and your right stick. You can change the sensitivity for both. Now this is the part where you're gonna go back and forth a ton because you have all of these different profiles and you're gonna wanna be able to test out each of them to see which one works best for you. And you're gonna wanna play a lot of games to really make sure that it feels right. And Sony actually shows you what it's like to have your input going and it'll show you what the controller is actually doing. So this circle right here is how you're actually pressing it and the blue is what the controller is doing. So I have my stick about here but because I have it on this quick sensitivity curve, it's actually registering it all the way over here. So with precise, I got my stick all the way over here, but it's much closer to the middle. So you're, if you're somebody who's pretty heavy handed with the thumb and you're pressing a little bit further out than you should, this could help slow you down. Do you feel the difference? I do feel the difference, but like, I'm not gonna lie. I keep going back like, the idea of being precise sounds good or being quick sounds good, but I just, honestly, I keep going back to the default because I'm used to that feeling already. Oh. Like anything else is gonna kind of throw me off. I'd have to get used to it. Sticks, what can you do with the buttons as well? So you can't do anything for these buttons, but you can do it for the triggers. You can actually go into the trigger dead zone. So here you can create a dead zone for the trigger. And what is a dead zone? Basically, let's say I put it on 20, so from 20 to 100, that first 20 is not gonna be registered as a button press. Oh. And then after I reach a certain place, then it registers it as a button press. But why do you wanna use that? I, probably for people who maybe they rest heavy on oh. the on the buttons. Why else would they want this, Dom? <laughs> Dom's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and you can do this all the way up to what? 99. So you gotta get all the way down to, <laughs> to count it as a press. I don't know why somebody would wanna do that. And you can take it the other way around, kind of like a software version of this. But still, what makes it a big difference for me in the controller is the hardware. Like having those extra buttons, I need those in Apex now. And having the ability to make my trigger pull shorter, need that. But for the pros out there, this is probably going to be amazing. But yeah, it's been really nice to have this controller since it's, for me, a lot better. It doesn't feel any heavier. It's like slightly heavier, but it's not a substantial amount. I also find it pretty comfortable to hold because it has like these grips. Now it's not as grippy as like a scuff controller. These have like really serious grips on them, but what they do offer here does feel quite a bit better than the standard controller. Now, one thing I know people are complaining about is the fact that this has less battery. Now, for me personally, I don't play long enough gaming sessions where that's going to be like a real issue where it's never going to just die on me unless I forget to charge it the night before or something, then that can be an issue. Like how dumb, have you ever killed this thing in one go? Not from full charge. So if you like really long gaming sessions, that is something to keep in mind. Would I recommend everybody go out and buy it for 200 bucks? I don't think it's a thing that everybody needs. I know I changed as a Apex player once I got my Elite controller. That was a complete game changer for me. I completely changed the way I 
play that game and how good I am at that game. So I feel like it's necessary for someone like me. But if you're sitting there playing like, you know, God of War, uh, Ratchet and Clank, you don't need this for sure. You're not a first person shooter player. I don't think this is necessary, uh, but if you are, you can definitely see some real benefits here. It doesn't matter if you're willing to spend the money for it. Yes, Jay, you, you can play this on the PC. Now we did hook it up to our gaming laptop over here. And while you can map buttons and all that, I don't think these are quite registered on Steam just yet, those back buttons. Uh, so maybe with a software update, you'll get access to all of them. Uh, but you can't do anything with these or these buttons over here. So it pretty much functions as a standard controller so far. So you might want to wait before picking this up if you want to game on a PC. So yeah, it's in a weird spot. It's in a weird spot. It's definitely meant for pros, uh, but it is missing some things that I know pros would want. So what do you guys think? Let me know with a comment down below. Is this something you would pick up? I would personally for me because of how I play Apex, but if I wasn't huge on Apex, I don't know if I'd need it. But that about wraps up for this video, guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know if you're somebody who's picking one of these up. If you're on the fence, what are your thoughts? Leave those comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. We need more B-roll, right? You guys need to watch me play Apex? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Wait, what? <laughs> Come on.